What do you hope the kids take away from your message today? Well, again, um, um, we are we are not defined by uh, what we do, but but who we are. Uh, at the end of the day, who we are is, is what matters, not what we do, not what we did. And and so I just encourage them to to um, you know the, to work hard to build um, you know build good habits and and and, uh, and hope that those habits developed into in their character because that's what's going to carry today for them in life moving forward. You've had many different journeys throughout your life. What have you enjoyed the most about this part of your life's journey? Well, for me, it's, uh, I think I would say it's really about, um, it's about giving back. I mean, uh, being in a position where I can give back, um, it, it's way more uh, gratifying than receiving. You know, maybe part of the wisdom in life, part of learning in life is, is being able to absorb these lessons these pearls of wisdom that these uh, that these coaches, that these men and these staff try to try to share with you every day. Um, you know, I, I'll try not to curse, but every once in a while I will because they're not. It's, it's about life. It's really about life what you put in every day. Um, not uh, you're looking at a guy, you're looking at a man who. If you ask me where I was sitting at, where I thought my life was going, when I was sitting where you all are, um, uh, I would have been completely wrong. I would have been completely wrong about how the paths I was going to go down and how it would turn out. But I'm glad it's been unwrong. It's actually exceeded anything that I could have ever imagined. And as I sit here today without my legs, I will tell you that there's not one single thing that I would ever change in my life. You see, I'm the, the man that's talking to you is the sum of every single one of those experiences, good, bad, challenges. We can't go through life and redo. We can't pick and choose what we learn and the mistakes we make and the successes that we have. We can't, we can't pick and choose those and still be the person that we are. Now I'm really glad that I'm getting here to talk to the seniors because you are the leaders of the team. Whether you accept it, whether you not want it to be, you are. Maybe there are some of you sitting in here that may never step on the field, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that you give your best every day in every single thing you, that you do. Not just in the weight room, not just in the practice field, but even in the classroom, or even at home, if you've got a job. You see, what you're building right now is you're building a habit. You're building a habit that will really determine the trajectory of your life. That will really tell how you deal with the adversity of life, this life is going to give you, whether you want it or not. Whether it's fair or unfair. You're building and working on a habit that I hope, that I, that I have the greatest dream, that it will become your character. And when I say character, that's who you are. We're not football players, we're not soldiers. That's not what we are, that's what we do. But our character is who we are. That's who we are regardless of the situation. Come hell or high order, we are individuals, we have individuals that have a chance to be people of character. And the only way to build that character is for it to first become a habit. And I got a chance to build that habit that my alma mater we say on the fields of friendly strife, on the football field, on the gridiron. I built and worked on a habit with my teammates. A habit of giving my best every time, even when I didn't want to. 
holding myself accountable, not to being the best, but being the best that I can be. That's all I can do. That's all we can do is hold ourselves accountable to being the best that we can be. And only you, only you and you can look yourself in that mirror and say, I did my best today. Your coaches can push you, your teachers can push you, but you know if you put it all on the line that day. And it's about doing that every single day. That's what builds that, that habit into character. It's not holding on the past. It's not looking back at yesterday. And it's not looking and worrying about tomorrow. It's not worrying about a day that none of us are promised. Holding your account accountable to being present and being your best, that's all we can do in this life. And it's up to you to hold yourselves first and then your teammates accountable. You know when they're shirking. You know when they're not focused. Because that's when you let your guard down. It's hard being a champion. It's hard to tug that mantle of expectation. But you do it. You do it one day at a time, one play at a time. You all commit to that. You can own that. Because that's what you control every single day. 16 plus years ago, I was wounded by a roadside bomb or improvised explosive device in Iraq. The blast lifted my 15,000 pound vehicle off the road and threw me, blew me out of the vehicle. Where well, I can remember flying through the air, hitting the ground and coming to a rolling stop on my back. I knew what it was. It wasn't the first time I'd been in a vehicle that had been hit, but this time it was obviously very different. I was pissed. I was angry. I was mad. But very quickly, that shifted to realizing that my life was in danger. And the last thing I would say was, God, I do not want to die here before I lost consciousness. But my teammates, my teammates, men not much older than you, First Sergeant Frederick Johnson, the senior non-commissioned officer in my patrol, would find and locate me more than a football field from where my vehicle stopped, 9.30 at night, complete darkness, where he began to resuscitate me. And a young 19-year-old private named Eric Brown would put the tourniquets on my legs, the fact that the doctors give him credit for saving my life. The doctors get this young man. Now, the funny thing is, is this young man was not even a medic, at least not enlisted as a medic. He was a chemical specialist responsible for taking care of the nuclear, biological, and chemical equipment in organization. But as fate had it, the medic that was assigned to my PSD, he broke his ankle and he couldn't deploy with us immediately. We asked for a replacement medic. And they didn't have one to give us. So we sent this young man to a two-week course at, at Kansas State University. Well, my team, my, 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 senior, my senior folks on my team said, we're going we're gonna to put Private Brown in one of your subordinate platoons, and we're going to bring up a medic for you. Why? Because I'm the boss, because I'm the light colonel. And I said, no. I didn't want to disrupt the teamwork, but more importantly, if he was good enough for my soldiers, he was good enough for me. That young man saved my life. Somebody in here is going to be asked to do something that you didn't imagine. What kind of attitude are you going to have? Are you going to step up or are you going to put your head down because it's not what you want? This life is not about what you want. It's about what you're willing to give. 
And let me promise you this, if you're willing to give, then you'll get more than you ever imagined. I would get back to the States just four days after being wounded in an induced coma. Requiring surgery every other day to repair my blood vessels and clean up my wounds. One week after I get to the States, I'd lose one leg. And about a week later, I made the decision for them to take my, my right leg. I had some issues with my right arm, and ultimately I lost the use of my right arm and hand. I couldn't bend my right arm, I couldn't pick up my right wrist. To this day, I still can't use all the fingers on my right hand. I went from 215 pounds to 145 pounds. And I needed help with every single thing in my life. One day, I didn't need help with anything, and the next day, I need help with everything, including eating and going to the bathroom and faith in myself. And that gentleman, that's where I wanted to quit. I never quit in my life, but this wasn't what I imagined. This was not the life that I wanted to live, and I wanted to quit. But that wasn't who I was, like I said. It's not what you do, it's who you are. I had never quit my life, and I could not quit. Now, as bad and as bleak as it was, I could not quit. And you know what I said? I'm just going to live my life one day at a time. I had no idea what was in front of me, but I was going to be the best I could be because that's all I could do. That's all I could do was to hold myself accountable to being the best that I could be. And I recommitted myself to just keeping life that freaking simple. As Eric said, a classmate of mine, a teammate of mine, who happened to be a coach for the New York Giants, with would call, he checked on me when I was, after I was wounded in the hospital, and he happened to be coming to Washington, D.C. to play the Redskins, and he was part of the Giants staff, and the Giants that season had started out over two. And he asked me if I would talk to the team before the game, and I did. I shared a little bit of what I'm sharing with you all today. And they would win that game, and they would win, and that would be the first of 11 consecutive road victories which would culminate where I got a chance to talk to him one more time that season, the night before we played the undefeated New England Patriots in Super Bowl XLII. So I not only have one, but I've got two Super Bowl rings. This life has so much to offer, but you gotta be willing to put the work, the hard work in. Don't be comfortable with just being the best. Be uncomfortable with knowing that you can always be better. And holding yourself to being the best that you can be. Build that habit and make it your character. And you'll be a champion all your life. That's what this game, that's what this opportunity, that's what this team has a chance to offer you. And so what I, I challenge you all is are you going to hold yourselves accountable first and hold each other accountable? Because 40 some years ago I sat where you sat building that habit that became my character that helped me continue to live my life beyond anything that I could have ever expected. So with that, I wish you all the best. I really wish I could be where you're sitting. 
Not because I want to do it over again, but because of the promise and opportunity that you guys have. I've had my day. Our lives are this. Our lives are not really about what we take and what we accomplish. Those are great. But like these coaches that put the work in you, your lives are about what you leave, who you touch. It will never be another 2023 Bulldogs. This is that team. And that's what will last. That's what will last 40 years from now. What you guys leave out there. And so God bless you all and good luck. Thank you. So everybody, you know, once again, thank you all for coming. Uh, Coach Walker, I know you. Well, I just wanted to thank you, and, and your message goes along the lines of what we talk about, about getting comfortable being. Uh -huh. uh, we talk about it all the time. Overcoming. Uh -huh. We talk about it. So I, I think you're a great example, and, and uh, I really appreciate you coming. And it gives me chill bumps just talking, thinking about it. And guys, I, you may not realize it now, but you're in the room with greatness right now. All right, I know you, you, you may not realize it, but you really are. And uh, you're always welcome here, and, and, and you're a bulldog as far as we're concerned, all right? Okay. You played you play at West Point, correct? Yeah. You played for the Army. I mean, he, 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 he's a war hero, but he's a, he's a football player too, guys. And, and, and he started out like you guys do, playing high school football, being yelled at by his coaches. All right? But thank you guys. And, now we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go back over to continue our film session, and then do you guys want to take a quick picture? Uh, you all right with, with pictures? Go ahead. Anybody want to take a quick picture? I'd like to get a kind of a group shot, maybe with the seniors or juniors, and then we we can uh, take a couple pictures, and then we'll get back to film. All right. Thank you again.